the material science and engineering department at NUS has almost uh, doubled in size from uh, roughly 18 academic staff about four years ago to almost 40 today. And we are planning to hire at least another 10 academic staff to the department. And US has recognized uh, that materials are going to be very important in the near future, both from a purely academic point of view, but also from a societal impact point of view. Many new device concepts and industries require a huge advances in materials and this is a great opportunity for groundbreaking discoveries, spin-offs and industry impact for the university. The most notable hire for our department was Professor Konstantin Novosolov, the Nobel laureate who discovered graphene, one of the most important material breakthroughs over the last decade in an institute which Professor Novosolov is heading the Institute for Functional Intelligent Materials. Other areas of focus for my department are sustainability, soft robotics and variable electronics. Some time ago we started our work with the two-dimensional material graphene, but in fact the whole family of two-dimensional crystals, which allowed us to create materials on demand by sandwiching individual crystals uh, in, into a three-dimensional Van der Waals heterostructure. And then we, we realized that we create very interesting states with multiple phase transitions. So you basically see live materials which are very reactive and very responsive to the external environment smart membranes, membranes which can actively monitor the conditions of the water stream, for, for example, of the surrounding environment. And we try to work on the neuromorphic computers, creating new memory devices capable of doing those machine learning functions with low energy consumption. We work on the ionic devices, those which can be served as the biotic, abiotic interfaces for healthcare application. NUS Applied Materials Advanced Materials Corporate Lab that I co-direct was established in 2018 with a mission to develop new materials and complex material solution. The aims of the corporate lab are to build capabilities for the next generation semiconductor manufacturing, not only in Singapore but globally. We also aim to develop industrial line talent, as well as to generate startup companies that are based on the work in the corporate lab. Well, I work on the interface between nanoscience, materials, and electronics to power next generation devices that involves the use of artificial intelligence. In short, I make AI smarter through material science and engineering. Right. We work on intelligent materials that can sense their environment very well. We hope we can give these materials the sense of a doctor's touch so that they can allow anybody to immediately have a gauge of how healthy they are through our materials and technology. One of the areas that we are developing is self-repairable or self-healable materials. These materials, they are soft, they can behave like skin. Importantly, they can self-repair just like humans can by having these technologies involved in the making and processing of materials and devices for electronics. They can allow next generation devices that can heal themselves, even if they are damaged. So we're interested in how electrons in such systems interact with terahertz and infrared radiation, which is important for many applications. So for example, we can apply this technology for quantum communications, we can look into gas sense, we can look for beyond 5G communications, navigation of autonomous vehicles and, and many more other directions. My research mostly focuses on quantum technologies. In particular, my main project is about linking the information carried by telecom photons, the kind of photons that carry information in the telecommunication network together with superconducting qubits, which are a nice building block for quantum processors. For many years, my group has been working with industry closely. Uh, one of them in Singapore is SG Engineering on different types of new batteries. These cell batteries can offer much higher energy density in principle. They can also be made at much lower cost. So we are in the process to make the lithium cell battery to be able to recycle for a long, long time. So this will be a big breakthrough for the technology. Our lab has been quite extensively working on the new research platform we call the Electrified Chemistry to address the critical issues uh, confronted by our society from energy and to environmental issues. So there's quite a number of uh, the 
the applications we can uh, use uh, based on the electrified the chemistry, you know, from the high energy density, the flow battery for stationary energy storage and uh, to the on-demand hydrogen production. And also to, we call this the electrometallurgical battery material recycling. It's mainly for the waste leachment battery materials. And in our lab, we have been quite closely working with the industry, you know, by licensing our technology. And also we have uh, the very excellent young people, so they have uh, the idea to have a spin-off to commercialize the technology. My vision for the department is that it becomes the globally leading department in material science and engineering. That it provides the best possible education for our students and that it is a place which nurtures talent on all levels. I also would like to see that our department becomes the go-to place for industry whenever they run into fundamental problems with their processes related to materials or new materials to enable their revolutionary new device concepts.